The Lakers end their season with a win in overtime up against the Denver Nuggets. They beat them 146 to 141. Now, at halftime, the Lakers were tied up 69 apiece. Campazzo for the Nuggets was ejected in the first half. He shoved Wayne Ellington in the back for no reason, and that was the correct call by the official. Dwight Howard didn't play in this game, but gee, he was pumped on the bench. He was loving this performance by LA, and so he should be. It was a fantastic win, uh, and you know, a little high to win this season. Mac McClung signed up on a two-way deal. Uh, and he got game time today for the Lakers, which was great to see. I can't wait to see um, future performances from this youngster. Now, for this game, it was a close one. It was a tight finish. It was good to see the effort and hustle from the Lakers. They were 17 points down, and their fight to come back and win this one was fantastic. THT in the first half sprained his ankle, so he's ruled out for the rest of the match. Hopefully, he is okay. Austin Reeves uh, late in regulation with a steal. He did a layup, and with six seconds to go, we were tied up at 135 apiece. Overtime uh, come along, Nuggets late in overtime with about a minute left, missed a couple free throws, and Mac McClung with the exclamation point on this game with a reverse dunk. That's fantastic to see that energy and that athleticism from this youngster. The sparks at times that he created, especially with that dunk at the end, put the icing on the cake for the Lakers. Now, speaking of Sparks, it doesn't get any bigger than AR-15. Austin Reeves, 16 rebounds, 10 assists, 31 points. He had 10 points in the first half. First career triple-double for AR-15. And all those stats that I've just read out are all career highs for him. So congratulations to Austin Reeves. He was the leader for the Lakers. And to see a young player like that have that leadership, create that spark... Pull his team over the line when they needed him, especially late in the game. It was great to see. Malik Monk, four rebounds, one assist, 41 points. That's a career high for Malik uh, with 41. He had 17 points in the first half. Stanley Johnson, eight rebounds, three assists, 15 points. Mac McClung, the youngster, had three rebounds, one assist, six points. Wenyan Gabriel, 10 rebounds, three assists, 14 points. And Wayne Ellington had a nice game with two rebounds and 18 points. For the Nuggets, the boogie, DeMarcus Cousins, had 9 rebounds, 5 assists, 17 points. He had 10 in the first half. Marcus Howard, 3 rebounds, 1 assist, 23 points. And Brian Forbes had 1 rebound, 1 assist, 24 points. He had 11 in the first half. Now, I know this game, you know, was good to see uh, the youngsters step up. Those players who are normally benched, those players who normally don't get game time, they got the win. It was a nice game. It was fast-paced at times in transition. It was smart basketball from the Lakers at times. Now, I know this was a nice consolation prize, I would say, for the Lakers to finish off their season, but this season has been a forgettable one. This season has been one of the most poorest seasons in the Lakers franchise, if not uh, the poorest one out of them all. So, um... We look at this season. Now, this year, the Lakers fell in love with the three-point shooting at times. The Lakers gave up. The Lakers didn't see the game out um, at times throughout the year until that final buzzer. We saw the Lakers start off well at times, and then they dropped off in the third quarter. And then at times, it would be the Lakers started off poor, then they'd suddenly come back out of nowhere, have a strong second half, but then lose it late. And this season, the word of the season for me has been inconsistent because that was the Lakers. They didn't know their balance between three-point shooting and points in the paint. They didn't know how to defend. They had poor defense at times. They had no perimeter defense uh, in games whatsoever. It was good to see the youngsters, their energy throughout this season, the spark that they brought to this team, they wanted to prove themselves to get in that starting five one day, and I'm sure they will. And another highlight for me this season has been one of the oldest players like LeBron James at the age of 37 put this team on his back at times and carry them over the lines for wins.
We saw LeBron drop 50 points in games. We saw LeBron just be a monster in games, whether it was from downtown or attacking the rim. And that's what the Lakers at times needed to do this season. They needed to drive the lane more. They needed to attack the rim more and have that energy, have that fight in them. And some players just didn't know their game style, like Russell Westbrook in particular. Russ, at times, he just didn't fit this Lakers puzzle. For um, this season, a few experienced players, the older players, they went out there with the name on their back of their jersey and they didn't deliver to their best standards. They didn't put in the effort. They go out there with a big ego. I've got the name on the back of my jersey. I've had a great career. But I'm getting paid, so I'm not going to put in my best. I'm not going to chip in on the scoreboard. I'm not going to play well for this team. I'm going to sit on my laurels, cop a loss on the chin, on to the next game. What a waste of a season this has been for the Lakers because there has been potential. There's the talent there, but they just don't gel together. There's been too much iso ball at times this season. They don't move the ball around. They don't work as a team. Frank Vogel and Rob Palenka need to be out of the Lakers club by next season because they have been a speed bump this season for the Lakers and it's one that the Lakers couldn't get over. Vogel had poor rotations. Vogel gave up. Vogel had that dumb look on his face when things weren't going to plan. There wasn't any improvements from Frank Vogel this season. Rob Palenka dismantled a championship side for the Lakers. And what players did you bring in? Russell Westbrook? Camelo Anthony? What have they done this season? Besides the odd occasion when they play well, they haven't been consistent. The Lakers haven't been consistent. And this is a season definitely to forget. I know there's been a couple highlights here and there. But gee, this season has been painful to watch. Other uh, than that, all the best to the Lakers for next uh, season. There needs to be a rebuild. Uh, a rebuild, excuse me. That's for sure. Not only in the coaching department, but player-wise as well. I'm really loving to see these youngsters step up, and I hope they get more game time next season. Other than that, folks, I really appreciate all the support throughout the season for my Laker recaps. You know, um, for the other teams in the competition, all the best to the ones who have made the playoffs. It is going to be a fantastic final series. My pick to win the chip is the Phoenix Suns, and I also hope uh, the Memphis Grizzlies go well, but I just think they won't win the chip. I just think they uh, need that extra... Uh, they don't have that experience, I would say, in finals, etc. The Suns last year, obviously, just falling short. So hopefully they can redeem themselves in the playoffs this time round. Folks, on to next season. Hopefully it's a better one, that's for sure. And as always, go Lakers. If you like that recap and you want to see more of my content, remember to hit that thumbs up, like, comment, and hit that red button down there that says subscribe. Much appreciated. For more content, follow me on my Facebook page and also my Instagram page.